Hi, I'm Reverend Al Sharpton, and I am the subject of the documentary movie Loudmouth that's going in theaters on December 9th. And I'm happy to be on That's So Random. Let me read that so random question. The new documentary Loudmouth tells your story of standing up to the status quo. Why did you agree to participate in the film and what do you appreciate the most about it? I trusted uh, Kadar Massenberg who came to me and asked could he put it together. What I most appreciate about it is they went and got archival footage to show what we were marching against in the 80s and the 90s all the way till now with the George Floyd movement, the 20, uh, 20 March that we had in Washington, over 200,000 people in the middle of a pandemic. It's one thing for me to sit and do an interview, it's another for them to show you people throwing watermelons at us and calling us the N-word and me being stabbed. Not in Mississippi, not in Georgia, but in New York. The other notable aspect of Loudmouth are you married different looks throughout the decades, watching the doc which outfit made you cringe? That's so random. But anyway, uh, I, I, I think I grew up in public. You have to remember when I started becoming a public figure in New York, I was in my 20s. And if you wearing the same thing when you are 40 that you wore when you're 21 and you haven't changed with the style, there's something wrong with you. Where do you get your tailored suits? My girlfriend is a designer and she chooses a lot of what I wear. But where she picks them from, I'll put it this way, those that know won't say and those that say don't know. What have you learned about the media since your days in the trenches, battling the press to cover civil rights and racial violence? One of the things I learned, and I've been hosting a show on MSNBC now 11 years, is a lot of people are talking about stories and doing stories that they have no kind of relationship with the environment of the story. They look at the surface and don't understand what's beneath the surface. And I've learned that you've got to be able to capture people's attention and hold it. The worst thing in the world is to have a real important social issue that ends up a 24 hour news cycle. You were James Brown's tour manager. What was it like? I was never James Brown's tour manager. I was like a son to him. I went down to Augusta, he had done a, a benefit for my uh, youth group when I was 19. His son was a member and his son got killed. So he kind of had me come to Augusta. While I was there, his manager at the time had a heart attack. So he said, Reverend, I trust you with my money. I want you to go on the road with me. And I would go back and forward my civil rights work and go on the road and do what James Brown asked me to do as a son. He would never, ever let people call me his manager. He said, he's a minister, he's a civil rights activist. He's not in show business. Are there any black women who inspired you to fight and influence your politics? Absolutely. Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman to go to Congress, and she was very, very much an influence on me. I'd ride around and campaign with her every day, and I'd sit in the car, and she was an educator, and I would be talking, and she'd say, Alfred, you did not use the right verb there. Alfred, she was very, very much an educator. What song can you not help but sing out loud and can you sing a little bit of it now? If I'm walking somewhere and I hear it, I stop and start getting ready to do the dance because I'm headed to the uh, van and I'm beat it, beat it. Well, I ain't gonna dance for you. you just That's so random, ask me to dance. I'm a minister. Is there one bit of advice you could give to young activists based on what you've done wrong early on and write later on, and what advice would that be? To let your brain, your thinking, outrun your emotions. Channel your anger, channel your rage, and process it so that you're leading to change, not just expression. Kanye West, I have 99 problems, Kanye ain't one of them. Eric Adams, I've known Eric 35 years. He's a good, solid brother. Donald Trump, 2024, thoughts? I want to be there the night they tell him he lost again. How do you unwind after a busy day? What makes you laugh? What makes me laugh is for you to think I unwind after a busy day. <laughs>